Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an advanced command tutorial about the way that command blocks are changing for Minecraft 1.12. Specifically, we are here in 17W16A, which is the latest snapshot when I'm making this video. It came out earlier today. And in it, there was a change to chain command blocks. Now, there was actually a little bit more of a change than just chain command blocks, but that's the important part. And the, as I mentioned in my update video, the patch notes just say optimized chain command blocks. However, it's a great deal more than that. So let me explain to you exactly how command blocks worked and how they work now. So we have an impulse command block and that is needs redstone and whoops. And we have a chain command block, so let's set that to always active. This is a very, very basic setup. What happens if I was to run a command or indeed just switch this button over so that it says always active? What happens is not that this immediately runs. Instead, what happens is that this block gets scheduled to run, so it will run the next tick. And then it looks where it's pointed. So it looks like I'm pointed into a chain command block. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to schedule that one as well. So now we have two command blocks that are both going to run next tick. And then we can add a third one. And now we have three command blocks and they're all going to run next tick. So that seems like a perfectly fine thing. Which is this, really. Like, it works in this situation most of the time. You get a one tick delay when things activate. And that's also okay. Like, that's perfectly fine. Now, if we were to change this into a repeat command block, and just let's, let's just turn that on. And we're gonna do uh, game rule command block help list false here to not spam ourselves like crazy. But essentially what happens now is that every tick, this thing runs. And because it's a repeating command block, it's going to schedule itself to run again the next tick. That's what keeps it ticking, so to speak. So now we have this repeating command block and it's scheduling itself to repeat and then it's looking the same way the impulse command block did. Uh, what am I pointed into? Okay, I'm pointed into a chain, so we're going to schedule this. So this thing essentially schedules three blocks to tick every tick before it's done anything and then they all run because they were scheduled. That's how it used to work. Now, there's a very, very simple problem with this, and it comes up a lot in map making, actually, is when I switch this thing off, it doesn't instantly switch off. So, because I've already scheduled the entire chain to run, it's going to run again the next tick. So, when you switch something off, you get an extra tick. That's, that's pretty annoying. So, basically, if I was to... So, let's, uh, let's do something here. So... Let's to say one in this, and we're gonna get spammed with ones, and then we're gonna get to say say two, and then over here we're gonna switch this one off. So if we actually switch it off now, you see, I set the command, and then we got one two, and then it stopped. So what happens if I do slash block data on this, and then we do auto zero? So this switches that block off through a command, and we put that in here. And then we switch this on and you see that it runs once and that's the change if in previous snapshots or in previous versions of minecraft all the way back to when the repeats and chains were added all of the command blocks would have run a second full turn so that's pretty useful because pretty often what happens in map making is you leave a state of something and you want to switch one clock off and you want to switch to another one and Currently, in uh, Entrapment has lots of st logic dealing with the fact that this stuff might run um, <laughs> second time. There's actually a way around it involving fill commands, filling blocks next to these and stuff. But it will be very nice to not have to do that. So that's nice, but it doesn't seem so revolutionary, does it? Well, the one thing more than this that has changed is... Because we no longer schedule the chain command blocks, as we are executing here, so this one gets scheduled. When it runs, it looks here, runs this one, looks here, runs this one, looks here, runs this one, and so on. All of this is now happening in order. Which means that, let's say we just uh, do a construct something like this. 
And, well, when I'm here, I can actually do a set block here to change this block. So, let's say that, uh, let's just execute off of any player within a radius of three, and then we're going to do a set block on this thing, slash set block, this thing, to be a chain command lock uh, facing west. So that's what she says that way. This is the command that we're going to run through this execute. And then in here, we're going to run uh, basically the opposite. We're going to just set it east. Like, obviously, this is not this is not a good way to be doing this. But yeah, so let's say someone near say no one near. So now if I just back off a bit and we'll trigger this block, say no one near. But however, if I step closer, uh, no one near. Okay. It's a little bit too far away. Someone near. This is if then else in command blocks and it's running in the time. There's no tick delays. This is so super common, <laughs> such a common scenario, what we wanted for a long time and we can now do it. So what would probably normally be more of the case is you wouldn't do that. You would do something like this because then you can actually hear somewhere down the line, merge these two streams into one again. And then you're, this is basically like a block of commands that gets executed on each side, depending on what this is. You could even keep on going with empty command. Oh, come on. <laughs> Placement of the command blocks. Empty command blocks like this. And then you turn aside if you want to do something. Otherwise, you just let it run through. And since these are empty, they're going to be pretty quick to run through. So this opens up a lot of possibilities that we previously didn't have or were very, very annoying to do. All right, so here's a little bit more of a visual representation of this. Um, we have the particle commands in all of these. This is just a repeating command block that drives this. And here are two switches. So this one will just set a block facing west, and this one will set a block facing east if I am within a radius of five. So now we can just see that this switches over as I come closer. That's the game changer. Now, there are some questions then. What happens if you were to do something like this? Can we now have several executions of this per tick? Because it's no longer scheduled and that's thus no longer unique in that way. And the answer is no. These command blocks will keep track of when they last run. And if you try to run them again, the same tick, they will not let it happen. They will just ignore that because you've already run that tick. And that's good because otherwise you would get into situations basically where I would do something like, let's see, something like this, and the game would be in big trouble because you would just keep spinning around in this little loop of commands. So we don't want that. That's not what happens. Instead, these command blocks get triggered by whichever of these repeating command blocks is first and then not again. If we look at these, we get 1, 3, 4, 2. 1, 3, 4, 2. Uh, so 3 and 4 only happened once, and they're triggering off of 1. So 1, 3, 4, and then 2. And then these two don't execute again. Anyway, that was it for this uh, quick tutorial on the new command blocks in 17w16a. I hope you found this interesting. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you find this useful, if you have any questions, let me know as well. And I will do my best to answer. Slice time, out, take care, see you later. <laughs>